Hello and welcome to the Shiny Bees podcast, a podcast for those who like their knitting, comedy and yarn in equally large measures. I'm your host Jo Milmire and this is episode 43, there's a short road technique for everyone. Hello everybody and welcome to the show. Today is Sunday the 19th of April. How are you all? I hope you've been well since last time I spoke to you. A warm welcome to returning listeners as always and a welcome to any new listeners that have come across, particularly any of you that have come uh, to listen again following the interview in the last episode with uh, Justina Lorkowska. who is absolutely lovely and um, I had lots and lots of lovely feedback from you all about how much you enjoyed listening to her story. Um, I think it's always interesting to hear about people who are doing really well for themselves now and she definitely is, she's certainly going places I would say, Um, but started from a really ordinary beginning. Yes it's brilliant to hear from the, the sort of rock stars of the knitting world Um, like Stephen West but I think it's also important to hear from those who are definitely up and coming and also those who are just quite new just doing it for a bit of fun as well and we'll have some uh, a good mix of people got a good mix of um, guests planned over the next few uh, interview episodes for you which should be really good fun again um, if there's anyone in particular that you want to hear from then let me know Somebody suggested in the Ravelry group that I interview myself. <laughs> could be interesting. Could could be interesting. I don't think I could take it that seriously. So maybe I would need a guest host if I was going to be interviewing myself. I would need someone else to pretend to be me. And then I could answer the other questions. Um, but uh, yeah, if there's anyone that you, you think, oh, I've always wondered what they're like. And uh, you want me to have a chat to them, uh, then let me know. Because it is very organic, the interviews. It tends to just be... Um, something that piques my interest at that time and I'll go speak to them and uh, yeah just come a bit nosy really which I think is a good thing I think being nosy is a very good thing curiosity is a good thing it might have killed the cat I'm sure I'll be fine so yeah we've got lots of good stuff uh, coming up over the next few episodes Next week, I will be reviewing a lovely new yarn from Blacker Yarns uh, that I cast on this weekend. We've been sitting in the garden, enjoying the sunshine, having a braai. My in-laws have come up to visit and they've brought their little Sheltie with them, their little doggy, Mojo, um, to visit as well. So I took the opportunity to sit in the garden and cast on uh, this new yarn to put it through its paces, give it a bit of a test drive in the sunshine. And uh, little Mojo settled into the the pack order reasonably well. He's been told off a few times. He's a bit jumpy, jumpy, and uh, Womble in particular is getting a bit old and grumpy now. He doesn't take to that kind of uh, shenanigans uh, too easily. But um, he's he's very sweet. He's been following HBM around the entire weekend. They're firm friends now. He absolutely loves her. So wherever she goes, he follows, which is very sweet. Um. Because her and Bowsy are best friends, so Mojo's not quite got used to accepting the whole cuddles and hugs thing that Bowsy's just sucks up because he's a good lad. Um, but considering he's never really met small children before, he's um, he's done really well. He's uh, he's a cracking little doggy, so uh, we've enjoyed having him around, and of course, our in-laws. Um, we've been doing some. Uh, touristy stuff been visiting a few local places to show them around and uh, they'll be back off down the road again tomorrow back to east sussex so as we have our in-laws staying they're in our spare room slash my office uh, which is where i normally do the recording from and um obviously because they're they're staying there the recording's been done from a different location today and hopefully it won't be too much of a change for you and normal service will resume again next week uh, once they leave. There's been quite a few random things going on at uh, Captain Shiny's World of Fun recently. And um, you might not have seen me around quite as much as usual on uh, social media. 
Uh, we're having a few issues with HBM's schooling uh, because of her age and because of the difference between the Scottish and English education systems, which I'm not going to lie is a massive capacity zapper at the moment um, for us because if, if she was in England, she'd be going to school in September and because we're in Scotland, she won't be. Um, but we're going to move back to England and she'll have missed an entire year of school. So we're in a protracted discussions with the council about this, um, which is, is sucking a lot of, of positive energy out of the room. I'm not going to lie. Um, so hopefully that'll, that'll all be resolved soon. But there's been some exciting developments on the shiny bees front. And um, there's going to be a few changes to the podcast and the blog and how things are are run really um all of which are aimed at making the experience better for you guys and to ensure that i can keep bringing you cool giveaways and um interesting interviews and all that kind of jazz so from next week there will be sponsors to the show and this is not a decision that's been taken very lightly because anytime you put in sponsorship messages, um, it kind of detracts from the experience because it's diluting your content in effect. Um, obviously I do talk to people, I do talk about products that I like, products that I use, um, things that I think you're going to be interested in, then I talk about it. If I think it's a lot of goff, it doesn't come anywhere near the podcast. Um, quite frankly, and I have been approached many times asking, would I like to have uh, an online casino or a payday loan or some other such thing that has nothing to do with knitting or craft? Um, and actually, if it's got to the point where you need a payday loan lender to to fund your stash habit, then the, there's probably other people you need to be talking to than uh, than me because I, I don't really help in the you know enabling stakes in any way, shape, or form. Um. But that's the, you know, they're all sponsors that have got nothing to do with the podcast, got nothing to do with anything you're interested in. And frankly, I, you know, it doesn't matter. They could give me as much money as they want. They're not coming on my show, frankly. So, <laughs> same goes from the pink knitting companies, in all honesty, but that's another story. And um, because there's been quite a lot of um, changes in terms of. The frequency of the podcast has gone up, which has increased hosting fees and um, mostly giveaways because the postage is is costing me a fortune to post prizes out. Um, I've decided to take on some selected sponsors um, through uh, for the podcast and blog, and the, purely to cover the cost of um, of production, essentially, and posting things out and everything else. So, what I can say is. There will only be people that I think are high quality. Then there will only be people that I think you'll be interested in. And um, the sponsorship adverts, if you will, will be kept to the same positions in the podcast. So if you want to skip through them, you can do. Um, but they will be chosen because I think they are relevant to you. So, And this will just help um, cover the extra costs that have um, have crept up since going weekly and getting loads of um, good stuff to give away and exciting things going on. So uh, it's just to let you know that's going to happen. And um, it was always going to happen at some point, I think. Uh, but once it became a bit more of a serious um, podcast and really, you know, the amount of work that goes into the episodes now uh, and the forward planning that I'm doing for the rest of the year and things, I need to make sure that it's uh, sustainable, really. Um, because I am self-employed and it does cost me quite a bit of money to uh to pay for the postage and things so it's just about making sure everything kind of tallies up and bringing you stuff that uh you're interested in and that could be uh could be good fun so it's just that you know that's going to happen and there are some exciting plans on the horizon very exciting plans for the second half of the year and we'll be announcing those in may um, for a new sort of segment slash study that's going to be ongoing mostly on the blog but there will be bits on the podcast as well um, and that's in collaboration with one of my uh, podcast muckers and we'll both be announcing the details of that the second weekend in May 
so look out for that coming through and um, in tandem with that the sock surgery will be slightly changing its format and going from a more instructional um, point of view from the beginning of the year now we've got you all uh, thinking about socks and trying different things and it'll be moving towards a bit more of an aspirational inspirational um, ideas and um, answering questions format in the second half of the year because we've been doing it for a few months now and we've taken on board the uh, feedback that we've been getting from people and we're trying to adjust what we're doing uh, so that you guys get something out of it i've certainly learned a lot of things from it and uh, i think claire quite enjoys uh, coming on the show as well so and uh, we do have a sock surgery segment this week and we'll be moving on to our short raw heel month and uh, Claire will be in the house talking about short row heels, different methods for doing short row heels, because short rows are something that a lot of people don't really like. Um, they find them fiddly, they find them messy, and um, it's all about just removing that barrier to uh, to doing short rows and just thinking, well, you know, I don't like this method, but there are all these other methods I could try. And actually, if I know how to do short rows, I can do so many more patterns. So not just socks. Uh, all sorts of other things so Claire will be back with that and she'll be in with a review of Bigfoot Knits uh, for you towards the end of the episode and um, other than that we'll have a little giveaway to do for you another little giveaway so uh, a very long intro from me <laughs> somewhat unsurprisingly I'm a little bit tired today so uh, uh, yeah not quite as uh, as tight as it normally is but anyway it's all good so uh, we will crack on with the show get yourself a, a big cup of tea and pick up your knitting and off we'll go enablers corner i do love a bit of enabling it is very good fun um this week and you must be under a rock if you've not already heard about it. But just in case you haven't, I thought I would let you know because I've fallen down this rabbit hole and I love company. So um, if you want to come down the rabbit hole with me and a lot of other people, then I suggest you head on over to Knit British and check out the Hap Along, which is a knit along on the subject of haps. Haps are a traditional Shetland garment slash accessory. Um, used for all kinds of things, um, including wrapping newborn babies and they're giving us gifts at certain times and the ladies used to wear them to keep them warm and um, they have a particular kind of construction um, that's different to um, an ordinary shawl and uh, Louise has done a whole series of blog posts about it on uh, knitbritish.net and then that has culminated in the hap along. I was not going to take part in the hap along. I fought it. I fought it valiantly. I do not need any more whips. We know the whip situation in my house. Works in progress, not the other kind of whips. Let's not get things confused. And um it's not it's not a favourable one. I need to need to whip down, get some stuff finished. But um it just seemed like a really interesting thing to do and everyone else was doing it, which always is always a bad sign. If when it comes to trying to resist temptation and uh, I thought oh, oh heck you know whatever let's just check into the penthouse at the uh, hotel for the hopelessly of committed uh, with all my other pals and we'll get knitting and um, I am knitting the ace light shawl by Gudrun Johnston and I'm knitting it in nurturing fibers super twist sock wool in a special one-off colorway that was done in 2013 called owl house and this colorway was based on um a place called the owl house and it was it's an example of outsider art and all of the inside of the house had these this glass in it red and orange glass and um, i'll put a link in the show notes so you can have a read about it um if you like but that was the inspiration for this colorway and i've had it for a while and not known what to do with it because it's a very very slow changing gradient colorway if you will from a really rich guava pink through to red through to kind of like mango orange by far the brightest hap out of the lot a lot of people have gone for traditional 
um, colours, uh, more muted colours and uh, traditional yarns, gone for Shetland wool um, to actually do this and make it a proper, almost a study um, on the haps, but not me, you know what I'm like, get the brightest skin out of the box and crack on with that, so that's what I've done. In fact, that's quite, quite good, it's not the brightest skin in the box, it's quite a good, quite, quite a good knitting term. Um, <laughs> And I've cracked on with that. So I'm doing the smallest size and I'm just about to finish the centre triangle. And in this pattern you knit the centre triangle and at the beginning of each row you do sort of a yarn over. So you end up with loops all down the side of the triangle. Which you then use to pick up for the border. So I'm about to go on to picking up for the border. I'm really enjoying it. The centre triangle is very kind of mindless. Uh, knitting is brilliant for just picking up and putting down when you get a minute. And um, the hap along has, has just snowballed completely. There is a chat group on Louise's thread on Knit British, and I will link to that in the show notes. I'm going to be honest, and I will say I'm too scared to go in there now because there's been so much chat. I'm so far behind, it will take me forever to catch up. So I might just pop in there, put a picture on, and leave again. Um, but I've been sharing my stuff more on Instagram with the hashtag hap along, and obviously the same for Twitter which is a bit more, a bit easier to keep up. I just cannot keep up with, it. there was over a thousand posts last week when I spoke to Louise, so God knows how many there are now. Um, and it's just, I, I, don't, I don't, I can't keep up. So, um, but I'll just keep up on, on, on social instead. There's loads of pictures of everyone's haps on there um, under the, that hashtag. It's really interesting to see what people are doing. A lot of people are doing um, a slight or other Gudrun Johnston patterns. A lot of people are doing um, Kate Davies patterns because she's got quite a few hap patterns such as North Mervyn hat. A lot of people are doing that. So um, it's really good fun. There's loads of people taking part. Loads of inspiration for colour choices, patterns, different yarns that people are using. It's a construction and a pattern that is not, you know, you don't come across that often. Um it's not just your standard kind of top down triangular shawl thing. Uh, it's something a little bit different with plenty of knitting history to it. And as I said, Louise has covered this in, in depth. And it's any um, traditional Shetland construction pattern or any pattern that is described as a hat on Ravelry. So there's loads of choice um, there for you if you want to take part. So I heartily encourage you to come over and check out the hap along which has been run by louise of knit british i'll put links in the show notes and if you want to look at my um project it's in my instagram feed and everyone else's projects are obviously under um hap along so on to the giveaway i have a new giveaway for you. The Knitting Suite giveaway closes this evening at 23.59 GMT. So there is still time to enter that one from episode 41 if you would like to. And I heartily encourage that you do. Um, but I have another new giveaway for you. It's a good one. It's a giveaway for a skein of Volmiser. Which I was fortunate enough to win at Edinburgh Yarn Festival as um, part of the door prize and um, I just thought I'd give it away to you guys as a thank you. There's lots of you over in the group on Ravelry and chatting and sending me emails and all that kind of stuff and um, I just really enjoy your company. So although I won it and although it's Woolmiser and although everyone goes on about how great it is and now it's like, you know, the search for the golden fleece or what have you, I thought, ah, you know what, it, yeah, it would make me happy. It's probably going to make someone else happier. So I decided to do a giveaway with it, as one does, or as I do, because I'm a rock star like that. So it is a giveaway for 150 grams of Superwash Merino, which will probably come in at about 525 metres. And it is, I'm not sure what, it says intensity, metal, floor marked. Pure 100% vol. I love German, it's such a great language. Um, so yeah, I'm going to give this, this little puppy away. I'm just going to give, it came as part of a kit um, with some some Volmizer wash and the yarn and a little bag. So I'm going to give the bag and the Volmizer yarn away because the wash was leaking a little bit. So I don't want it to leak all over your yarn in the post. So I'll just give the yarn and the little uh, project bag away and keep the uh, 
the wash safe here. It is um, a variegated colourway and it is a sort of dark rust orange, a kind of olivey green going through to a more bottle green and a dark crimson. It's very pretty. It's very tightly woven skein. It's like you could actually kill someone if you hit them with it, I think. Um, but I'm going to give it away. So, in order to enter the giveaway, um, you need to go over to the group on Ravelry and I'll put a link in the show notes for this and it will be the giveaway thread for episode 43 and all I want you to do is tell me what your favourite bit of the podcast is. So if you have a favourite segment, if you had a favourite interview, if you have a favourite thing that you always look forward to, just a bit of uh, market research for me so I know what stuff you like and what to bring you more of and um, I'll pick a uh, well, I won't pick the random number generator of good fortune, our ever-present pal at random.org, the best URL in the world. We'll choose one of you at random, clues in the title, uh, to win this skein of yarn. There is no geographical limit to who can win it. So entries are available worldwide. I will post it to you, no problem at all. And um, all you need to do to enter is, as I say, just let me know what your favourite bit of the podcast is. Entries are in the Ravelry groups I mentioned and entries are limited to group members only because this is a thank you from me to the Shiny Bees uh, group members who come and chat to me and say hello and contribute to our little community over on Ravelry. So if you want to enter, you need to be a member of the group to do so, um, which I think is pretty fair. Uh, it's not difficult. Just click join group. You can leave again afterwards if it's rubbish, but um, hopefully you'll enjoy it anyway there. I like I love my group members. They're very, very nice people and very chatty. They do make me smile. So um yeah, that's the giveaway for 150 grams of Volmizer. Gotta be in it to win it, kids. So onto the this would be excellent fodder for socks, onto the sock surgery. So I am joined again by Claire, who is back on the sock surgery to talk to us today about short rows. How are you, Claire? I'm very well, thanks. How are you? Oh, fine, thank you. Good, good. Um, yeah, short rows. Um, so while I was preparing for this, I was sort of thinking that I think short rows are a little bit like the Marmite of knitting. Um, I love Marmite, but I know some people don't like Marmite and I think short rows are a bit like that people either love them or hate them the next thing I'm going to say is where they kind of differ from Marmite because I think there is a real point for short rows in knitting and I'm not entirely sure that people who don't like Marmite would think there is a point of Marmite though I would strongly advocate that there is a point of Marmite in the world as we know it but short rows are a really really helpful technique but they are one of those things that people either love or usually, from my experience, dislike. I think hate's quite a strong word. So the short row heel is one of those tricky ones. And I thought that today what we could do is just chat a little bit about the sort of techniques and things that you can do to make short rows a little bit more pleasant. So if you've not used a short row heel before, the premise is that um, it's the same top down and toe up. And um, what's great about that is that it's, it's quite flexible in terms of a heel. Now, there are a few issues with fit in the same way as we talked about issues with fit with the afterthought heel. Because you don't have the gusset, if you have a very flat instep or a very high instep, um, it's harder to sort of adjust that because the short row has a different construction. It's also harder to reinforce. So you can do a slip stitch heel like we've talked about or the eye of partridge or as the um, fellow fluff listeners might know, the Allen partridge as they coined it when I was in Dundee. That's another story. Um, <laughs> anyway, sorry. Uh -huh. it's, it's a, <laughs> slightly random, but... Um, so fit issues are one problem, though there is, of course, there's always a solution in everything in knitting, and there's definitely a solution to fit. Um, harder to reinforce is a little tricky. Now you can do a short row in stocking stitch or in garter stitch. We'll talk about garter stitch a little bit later. And um, yeah, so that's essentially the sort of overarching 
um, idea behind it. And what you actually do is if you think of your heel, you work your heel over half the stitches, 99.9% of the time. What you do is you use short rows, which strangely enough are rows that are shorter than the standard length, hence the name, to create a shape um, which narrows to a point on the heel. And then you use uh, short rows again, which I suppose this point is a little bit of a misleading phrase because they're actually getting wider. But you then widen out the rows. So you narrow to a point and you widen out the rows and that fits around the cup of your heel. Where people run into problems with short rows, and I don't know if you've experienced this, Joe, is the method of making sure you don't end up with big holes. So I don't know what your thoughts are on short rows. Do you what do you do to avoid the holes? What method of short rows do you employ? The one that uh, Kat bought, bought, but I want to say Bodhi, but I think I'm getting a bit um, sucked into the tin can <laughs> knits thing. I'm oh just, dear. Got baby bums on the mind. The squishy babies. <laughs> the squishy babies, are, they're just it's completely disruptive. Um, Kat Bordy. It's Bordy, isn't it? Not Bodhi. Not to be confused. Bordy, yes. Not to be confused with Bodhi's bum, no. <laughs> uh, where she does the little, um, the little concealed wrap, where it's around the back. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I normally do that. So you do a quite a standard wrap and turn, but with the cap body method of concealing the wraps. Because I think one of the things that I, I really dislike wraps and turns, even though I use them, I still dislike them because they always look really messy. And she has a great technique for sorting out the wraps as you lift the wraps up. And if you've not done wraps and turns before, this won't make any sense whatsoever. But if you have, Cat Bordy has a great method where she hides the wraps at the back, which is much neater than the normal wrap and turn where they can just be a bit sort of sloppy. Um, so that fab. So, but you still do a wrap and turn, which I suppose is what most people, especially in, in um, British patterns, and I hesitate to say, but I would imagine sort of American patterns, um, a wrap and turn is quite a common method of creating a short row and essentially what that does is stops um, there being a gap because if you imagine if you just stop your knitting halfway and turn around you end up with a big hole um, so that's what that technique does now what I will I'll do a, a blog post with lots of links because I found lots of really good tutorials online for lots of different methods so the wrap and turn when I do it, it's quite sloppy. And I think a lot of people experience this. They knit short rows, they do the wrap and turn method. It looks pretty terrible, especially on the pearl side, and they give up. Um, there's lots of different methods. So there's the wrapless short row, which is quite similar or the same, I haven't quite established, um, to the Japanese short row, which doesn't have the wrap and turn, but you use a whole series of safety pins, which sounds quite complex, but it's quite worthwhile because it gives a really clean finish. And then there's other ways of doing it. So the yarn over short row and the German short row, there's a great method which I'll link to because it's very hard to visually explain where you sort of pull the stitch and it creates a double stitch. And these are all methods of closing that gap. So if you heard that we were going to talk about short row heels and shuddered and thought, I hate them, they're terrible, they always look really messy, I'd urge you to go and try one of the different methods because there's lots of different ways of um, creating that that sort of um, short row join in, in a way um, that might be neater and more suited to your knitting style than the typical wrap and turn. So I'll put all of that in the blog post and Joe will have all of the details in the show notes about lots of different methods and most of them you can just insert into your short row pattern. So that's my first tip when it comes to short row heels. Um, there's two great craftsy classes. One is free. And one is paid for. Um, both are by the um, ever fabulous Carol Feller, who um, does a wonderful series. Uh, one is called Essential Short Rows and one is called Short Rows. The Short Rows one is quite new and there's lots of really, really good information in there. And I think if you're a visual learner who likes videos, they're very worthwhile. Um, I've watched both of them and I think um, the free one is obviously worth, worth it because it's free. And the paid one is definitely worth the money. So those are the, the things in terms of techniques, um, because I think short words people are often put off for that reason. And then I was also going to talk about um, my favorite heel, which is the garter stitch short row heel. Mainly, I love the garter stitch short row heel because you don't have to pick up the wraps and turns. 
<laughs> which tells you how much I hate wraps and turns because um, the garter stitch masks them. So it creates a great little heel. Um, I've used it quite a few times in my patterns. I've got a new pattern coming out fairly soon. Um, well, it's sort of a new old pattern that was in the knitter, which also uses garter, garter stitch um, short row heels because I just think they're really cute. Um, one of the things to be mindful of there is they can be quite shallow. So there are a couple of things you can, you can change there. So if you have a, a higher instep or you need a deeper heel, it might not be the best heel for you. Just bear that in mind. Um, so yeah, so I think that's mainly what I was going to say about short rows. There's quite a lot of technical data there that will have to go into blog posts and um, some links to some great tutorials. The last thing I was going to add is about fit because I spoke about fit earlier and I said because you don't have the gusset, it's very difficult to adjust it. Um, but what you can actually do is you can insert a gusset into a short row heel. And there's an interesting um, sort of write-up. It's not very visual, but it does have all the information that you need by Kate Athley, and she is a, a real sock expert on nitty.com. So I will give people the link to that in case you have done a short row heel before and found that it doesn't quite work with your instep. Um, mainly if you have a, a high instep, that would be relevant. I think that's it. Super. Well, thank you very much for that, Claire. Okay, Claire, so we're back with our new feature again, which is did the divines take on um, on sock knitting titles, if you will, in the absence of a catchy name for this segment. So what book are you going to be reviewing for us today? So today is Bigfoot Knits by Andy Smith which is another cooperative press book. Um, they must be very supportive of the uh, sock designers out there. So it's a great book, which I think if Lara Neal, which is the last book we talked about, Sock Architecture, is sort of the book of techniques, um, I think Big Foot Knits is like the sock book that celebrates the fact that we all have different feet, a little bit like Amy Herzog says, you know, your clothes, it's not that your clothes are the wrong size or I'm not going to try and paraphrase it here because I'm going to get very wrong, but about sort of just celebrating the way that we are and accepting that we all are different shapes and sizes and there's nothing wrong with that. And instead of trying to make ourselves fit into a set sweater or a set pair of trousers or whatever, why should we all fit into a 64 stitch sock? Um, which I absolutely love because I think even as a designer, I often think, right, these are the sock sizes, you know, 56, 64, 72, let's go, here we make a design. But actually, not everyone is a 64 stitch sock and there's nothing wrong with that. And what Andy Smith does is, just in an absolutely fabulous way, is breaks down the foot and the different ways our foot might be shaped and, and, and sort of talks you through how to make socks that really, really fit you. So if Laura Neal talks about techniques, Andy Smith talks far more about it in an embracing your sort of shape and, and foot type way. And there's lots of information about measuring and um, scaling up, uh, for example, the, the leg to accommodate ankles or calves or changing the shape of the toe um, to accommodate wide toes, narrow toes, square toes, pointy toes, any toes you might ever imagine. So lots of diagrams, lots of tables. It's a really, really good book. Um, I'm sort of struggling to find anything that I don't like, which I suppose is probably a good thing. It's uh, got lots and lots of technique pages and then 12 patterns, which are stylish, um, really nicely styled, well photographed, uh, lots of variety. So there's textures and cables and lace. And um, yeah, it's a really, really good book, actually. I, I really like it. And I think if you are the kind of person who often feels that socks don't accommodate you or that socks don't fit correctly, um, or you get frustrated that socks are um, always 64 stitches or 56 stitches, uh, definitely give this book a whirl. So it's available, um, you can buy it on Ravelry for $15.95 via Amazon.co.uk, which I think must be a product of the new EU VAT regulations. 
um, because when I bought it, I bought it via Ravelry, but not via Amazon. Um, and then you can buy, buy it via Cooperative Press um, if you'd prefer to go direct to the publisher and avoid the Amazon um, route. And that's $16.95. And I can imagine there'll be some EU VAT on top of that. But regardless, it's still incredibly good value. And I think it's a, a really, really good resource. Um, so, yeah. And I'll be putting full details on my website with lots of pictures. And um, finally, Andy Smith has offered an ebook as a giveaway. So there'll be details of that on the website as well with um, closing date and how to enter, etc., uh, which will go up as soon as the podcast is live. Super. It sounds like a really um, good resource for a lot of people who've been asking questions in the Agony Ant section because a lot of people have been asking about making adjustments for their particular type of foot and you know how exactly how do you go about doing that where do you start with doing that absolutely the one thing that I really love about this book is it's not just about how do you make a 64 stitch sock a 56 stitch stock because you have a narrow foot it's you can take you can say I've got a narrow foot but I've got a wider ankle or I've got a narrow foot and a narrow ankle but I've got really shapely calves how do I accommodate my really shapely calves with this sock pattern and she goes into lots and lots of detail um, about how to measure your feet and how to adjust patterns so that they fit you really well so that you don't have to sort of sacrifice and the one thing I really love about this book is I don't think you have to sacrifice on style to get something that fits which often I think we fall down on. I think we make things that are great and, and sort of explore lots and lots of different shapes and sizes and, and celebrate that side of sort of clothing ourselves but fall down on style, um, which this doesn't. It's got really great patterns. I love them. They're, they're really fun and they're, they're really interesting and um, lots of variety. So I um, definitely recommend it. Super. I think I might put it on my Christmas list. Indeed. Lovely. So that was um, a review of Bigfoot Knits. Mm -hmm. By Andy Smith, and it's Andy, A-N-D-I, Andy Smith, Cooperative Press. Lovely. Thank you, Claire. I will put links in the show notes to your blog post on that so people can go and have a look at the pictures, etc. And uh, get a bit more uh, detail from there. Lovely. Thanks very much, Claire. Thanks. Bye. Well, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for this week. I hope you've all enjoyed the show, picked up a few uh, hints and tips along the way. Just a reminder from me, if you do enjoy the show and you'd like to help other people to find it, if you'd consider leaving me a review on iTunes or Stitcher, it would be greatly appreciated. And also, um, if you don't already, uh, consider hitting the subscribe button on iTunes or on your aggregator of choice to make sure that you kept fully up to date and you never miss an episode. You know what I'm like, go off on one randomly, might, you might put three out in a week and you'll miss them all. You'll only get them on, on Monday morning when you go looking for them if you're not subscribed. So uh, uh, that's the best and easiest way to keep up to date is to uh, subscribe either on iTunes or your aggregator or subscribe to blog updates and you will uh, get an email whenever my show notes go up on the blog. So. I hope you'll all have a great week, happy crafting, and I'll speak to you all again soon. Bye. You've been listening to the Shiny Bees podcast, a podcast for those who like their knitting, comedy, and yarn in equally large measures. If you'd like to get in contact with me, you can do so via the blog, or I'm Shiny Bees on Ravelry, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, and Facebook. You can email me at shinybeesinfo at gmail.com. Music for this episode is provided via Music Alley and it is Adam and the Walter Boys and I Need a Drink. I need a drink.